I want us to just renew our mind. That the reason why you sow into your local house is because you believe in the mission and the vision of the leadership. It's not to fund their lifestyle. Now, are there people that will use it to fund their lifestyle? Of course. There's a lot of people out there. This is why you have to really follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Because that is, that, it has nothing to do about the church's bank account. It has everything to do with what's in your heart. Tithing is a relationship with God. Your offering is a relationship with God. It's actually exposing your heart, not anybody else's. That's all it is. Now, whether you like it or not, it's true. And it's God and it's biblical. It is what it is. I can't, let me just get into these seven because I, I want to just talk about the parable of the talents here. Because I think there's, there's an understanding that we need to, to know how to steward gifts, resources, talents. Okay, let me just read this. Matthew 24 or 25 verse 14. Okay. We are in the parable of the talents. Well, my Bible has officially... This is how you know. I'm, I'm always in Matthew 24 and 25. Don't worry, this is not blasphemy, I promise. This is just somebody that goes into their Bible a lot. <laughs> For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. By the way, this is Jesus speaking. It's in red. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Five, two, one. To each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Let me just sit there. God gives you resources according to your own ability. It's not to, for you to say, why do I have this and they have that? Why do I have one and they have, have five? You'll be so focused on their five that you'll still continue to always have one. Good. Verse 17, and likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. Verse, uh, let's go to 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. 18, but he who had received one went and dug into the ground and he hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and, and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you have delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to them, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Some of us can't even steward the very few things we have because we're so focused on what we don't have. That's why it's hard to steward what I have because I focus on what is not in my hands. God doesn't care what's in your hands. He wants to know what's in your heart. And when you're a man or woman after God's heart, you eventually have what's in God's hands for you. And he says this in verse 22, he, he who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me to two, more, to two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I want to really study this a little bit more, but the five talents had many. The two talents had few. It doesn't matter how much you have. It matters how you steward them. It really matters how you steward them. You're complaining because you don't have authority in something that you want because you think you're better than somebody else. It matters how you steward what you have. Many or few. It doesn't matter as long as you steward it. I'm not looking to the left or to the right. I'm looking above. Verse 24, Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. You see how there's always an excuse or a reason. I was afraid. You start blaming your family, friends, people. You start blaming your surrounding. You start blaming your household. You start blaming your upbringing. You start bl bl blaming your significant other. You start giving other reasons to why you couldn't steward what you steward until you face it. How are you going to be delivered if you can't even know that you're, you're dealing with something? Like, you know how many people will come up and tell me the reason why I didn't do this, which is obedience to God, is because of him, because of her, because of them, because of what they did? We're a healing ministry too, so we talk a lot about healing. There's a lot about healing going on. But until I recognize 
I cannot release it. Until I recognize that I continue to blame others of why I'm not a good steward. Because if it's to be, it's up to me. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered, verse 26, and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. With interest. Interest is biblical. Okay? Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Y'all know how much a talent is if you were able to... It's a day's wages. So back in those days, a talent was a day's wages. Now, we can go through so many different ways. There's a difference between gifts, skills, and talents. I have to know how to steward each one. Let me talk about these, these keys on finances. Seven keys on, on kingdom finances. Number one, even in the midst of a famine, when you have God's favor, how you can continue to bear fruit. Number one, God is the source. I'll make it clear. God is the source. When it comes to stewardship, when it comes to finances, God is the ultimate source above all. The mortgage might be on your name. Your car note might be on your name, but it's his. The bank account might have your name on it, but it's his. All of it is his. He just has allowed you to become a manager of what's his. Just like Egypt with Pharaoh, they became managers of what was theirs. But in reality, it was God's. Number two, this might mess some people up. <laughs> Number two, giving to others reimburses you back. But giving to God multiplies plus interest. Charity does not always allow multiplication. Giving to God's house and his storehouse is what allows multiplication to happen. You think because you bless the homeless person that it's going to multiply. No, God's going to reimburse. He's in the reimbursement business. He'll reimburse you back. But when you give to God's house, he will multiply that plus give you some interest. Whatever it is, some people say tent, others give more, others give less. It's between you and God, and that's your heart. This is a kingdom principle. You give back to God, and he will multiply it, plus give you some interest. But we think just because we're always giving to homeless and charity, great, do it from the heart. God will restore that back into your bank account. He'll reimburse it right back, because he's in the reimbursement business. Just like he, he was here to test Abraham. He said, hey, I'm going to make you a father of many nations and you will bless other nations. I want you to give your, your son that you prayed for. But because I saw your heart and I knew you were a man of faith and the father of faith and you were about to willing to give up your son, I'm reimbursing him right back. You don't have to give him up. I was just testing you. God will usually do this. Giving to others reimburses you back. Giving to God multiplies plus give you interest. Number three, continue to seek God's will over your life. And I'll tell you why. Because this plays a big part with my stewardship, with how I disciple things, with what I think I should be able to steward over. Your gifts make room for you, is what the Bible says. So I got to know how to do this. There's, there's different types of wills, okay? Let me just give you all real quick what the wills are. Sovereign will. That's God's in control. Okay. This, this is a deeper study on will we've done. The sovereign will is God is in control. The permissible will of God. That means we got a free will. So God has given us a free will that is God's permissible will. But here's something we all need to seek over our life. God's personal will over your life. God's personal will. And let me share with y'all what the personal will consists of. It consists of these four things. What you're gifted for. What you're passionate about. What, you're, what you could get paid for, and what you're graced for. That's a whole nother teaching. We could talk about that for, the re for, for all our life. Personal will. What you are gifted for, what you're passionate for, what you, what you can get paid for, and what you're graced for. Everyone's going to be different. But that is God's personal will over your life. 
Like it can't always just be super spiritual to the point where it's like, God is going to provide, God's going to provide, and you're not working. You don't want to work because you believe God's going to provide. He's a Jehovah Jireh. There will be a time where manna will no longer fall in your wilderness season. Because if you want to go from wilderness to promised land and steward and build promised land, the moment they stepped into promise, the manna ceased. Manna stops when you get into promise. How many of us don't want to continue to stay in wilderness? Well, you're going to have to level up and understand, hey, there's some things I'm going to get paid for. That is your occupation. That can be a part of your skills, your talents, your occupation, what you're gifted for and what you're graced for. That's God's personal will. Continue to see God's will over your life. Number four, guard and grow like a gardener. Guard and grow like a gardener. Whenever you look at gardeners, they're, they're, they're guarding their territory. They're guarding their land. They're guarding the fruits of what's taking place. And whatever they got to do to guard it so that it does not become fruit that will spoil, rot, people coming in, they, they know how to guard, but they also know how to grow it. They know how to grow the seeds. They know how to grow and allow it to bear fruit. What's so amazing is God did not place us in a bakery in Genesis. He placed us in a garden. Why? Because the garden is what grows life and sustains life. If you wanted to put us in a bakery and get all that, like, as, long, as long as it's gluten-free sometimes, you know. <laughs> but if you wanted us to be in a bakery to grow bread, it's not about growing bread. It's about growing seeds and growing fruit. So become somebody that knows how to guard and grow like a gardener. Kingdom finances. Number five, the wise labor produces profit. Wise labor produces profit. I know people that work super hard and they justify why they work hard, but is it wise with your work? Is it wise with your labor? I'll show you guys Bible, Proverbs, it's in Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor, there is profit, but mere chatter leads to poverty. Labor, okay? I believe God will bring blessings supernaturally. You overpaid on your tax return last year, so he'll, he'll send you a check. But that might not always happen. Sometimes I got to learn how to take seed and plant it and grow it and multiply it. Okay? Get on your knees and pray. Then get on your feet and work. Okay? All wise labor produces profit. All labor, there is profit. This is why I tell people I'm not about just talking about ideas. Let's, let's, let's implement ideas. Let's, let's build off these strategies. Number six, money is spiritual. Money is spiritual. The devil wants you to think it's bad. Well, God wants to show you how to use it for good. Money is spiritual. Whether you think of it or not, it is spiritual. The transaction of just how money gets transacted in the marketplace, it's spiritual. The way we believe, what we put it to, what our heart is attached to that allows us to purchase those things, it's spiritual. It's all spiritual. Money is spiritual. And I have to understand that in order for me to understand how to use these principles that God is putting on my heart. Last thing, number seven, you got to be favorful. Full of favor. Not flavorful. Favorful. Full of favor. And favor comes with obedience. Favor, the Bible tells us, comes with wisdom that comes from God. Favor, as I walk in righteousness and holiness, I got to be favorful. You could do more in five minutes with the power of God, with the anointing of God, and with the favor of God than five years working in your own flesh. Five minutes in God's glory, five minutes under God's favor can do more than you trying to work five years in the flesh. I promise you that. That God does supernatural things when I'm in his will, when I'm doing it in his obedience. That man tries to do with their own will, their own ways, their own flesh, does not compare under five minutes under the power, the anointing, and the favor of the living God. Seek to be favorful, full of favor. Joseph wouldn't have done what he did, even though it took a decade for that promotion, he wouldn't have done what he did unless God's favor was in his court. Because there's something that favor unlocks that no other man can open. 
Those doors that God has shut, no man can open. And those doors that God has opened, no man can shut. Something powerful about God's favor. And I'll just share this, that wealth is not a sin. But when wealth has you, it can lead to sin. Money is not the sin. It's when money has you that can lead to sin and how we see it. I even saw like there was a, there was a reason why uh, marriages even like were, were breaking up. It was because a lot of it was finances. Like a lot of these things that happen, it, it, it's finances. And that's why there's over 2,000 plus verses in the Bible around finances. 16 out of the 38 parables Jesus preaches on is about finances. One out of every 10 scripture in the Old Testament has to talk about stewardship, managing finances and resources. There's a, we talk a lot about prayer. We talk a lot about faith. But there's way more scriptures around this topic. So why can't we be good stewards of it? I pray that the Lord continues to show us what happens here. And may you be the Joseph of your family. May you the one that breaks that generational whatever bondage thought process. May you be the Joseph that, that allows whatever God has. And some of y'all might be a little impatient sometimes. It took over 10 years plus for Joseph to get here. Can I really go through this? And can I release what God wants me to release during this time. What an interesting topic to talk about. I pray that we got a lot of revelation just through this and the Lord really spoke to us. It was a hard topic for me to talk on. Why? Because it's not always comfortable for people to hear. But I pray that we heard it from a different lens and a different perspective for us to understand what the stewarding this actually means and how to use it from a place of famine from Egypt, Joseph's days, and how to become someone that is just a good steward overall of this. We're going to continue with this kingdom series as we're closing out into the new year. And I believe God is going to unlock new things about the kingdom of God in this house. What I'm praying for as we're sharing the word and the rema in this house, I'm praying for a fresh rema. I'm praying for a way that the word of God has never been taught, share different methods the same message that you're going to hear it from a different perspective and a different lens when you guys get into the word and it actually becomes relevant and alive because a lot of us don't just need good doctrine or good theology. We also need Rema and revelation. It is Rema and revelation that breaks yokes of bondages. It is Rema and revelation that sets people free. I don't just need another good word or a good doctrine type of word. I don't want just a part of what religion has to offer. I want a relationship that comes with the Rema and revelation that only can be birthed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be very abundant in this house. And the territory that we're taking, I'm not going to be a, le- a, a borrower anymore. I'm going to be the lender moving forward. We're in this house. We're not talking about renting. We're talking about owning in this house. And that is what we're going to do. And we're going to do it in God's timing. Yeah. If it takes 10 years, if it takes 15 years, yeah. the wait is worth it as long as God's hand is on it. 